Welcome to part three of the teaching series, The Name of Jesus. Let's take our text right away, which is Acts chapter 4, verse 12. Please, would you kindly open to Acts chapter 4, verse 12, and read it with me. That's our text. No, is there salvation in any other? For there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. No, is there a salvation in any other? For there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. The Almighty God bless his word and let the word of God that is quick and active and sharper than any two-edged sword have the right impact in every one of us, the hearer of the word of God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Beloved, we have been on this teaching series, and this is part three. As the scripture that we have just read says, and also in part one and two of this teaching series, that is the name of Jesus Christ. We have seen from the scriptures, several scriptures that we have referred to, that there is absolutely no doubt, absolutely no doubt, that God has packed unlimited power, salvation blessings, and divine and eternal blessings, divine and eternal promises in the name of Jesus Christ for the benefit of humankind, for our benefit. Also, we have seen that Jesus Christ, therefore his name occupies the highest place in heaven, on earth, and beneath the earth. Jesus Christ, therefore his name occupies the highest place in heaven, on earth and beneath the earth by God's grand plan. So the almighty God has designed it so. God has made it so to be that the name of Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ and therefore his name occupies the highest place, the highest position in heaven, on earth, and beneath the earth. This is God's plan. So, the name of Jesus Christ is the name above all names. The name of Jesus Christ is the highest name and the name above all names. By, number one, inheritance. Number two, achievement. Number three, conferment. Number four, by creation or as the creator. Let's quickly uh, look at that with a few references as uh, uh, which we touched on in part two. The name of Jesus Christ is the highest and name above all names. By number one, inheritance. Number two, Achievement, number three, confirmment, number four, creation, by creation. If we look at by inheritance, God, he was born the son of God. He was born the son of God. So as the son of God, he inherited the most excellent name above all names. If we look at by achievement, he earned the most excellent name by achievement. He came to this world and lived a sinless life, did mighty works that nobody else has ever done, died for the sins of humankind, rose from the dead, ascended to heaven, and is now sitting or seated at the right hand of God. By this achievement, he has defeated the devil, he has defeated sin, he has defeated grave, he has defeated the world. He has conquered all. 
and is now seated at the right hand of God, having all power, authority, dominion, and preeminence over all creations of God in heaven, on earth, and beneath the earth. Revelation chapter 1, verse 5 and 6 says of him, he is the ruler of the kings of the earth. Let's just look at that very quickly. The ruler over the kings of the earth. Verse 5 says, I'm from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, and the ruler over the kings of the earth. To him who loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood, and has made us kings and priests to his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Another scripture would just like us to touch on in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, the Bible says, He who knew no sin, God made him to become sin for us, that through him we might become the righteousness of God. The righteousness of God. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. He lived a sinless life. He knew no sin. In fact, Jesus boasted to the Jews. He said, which of you can convict me of sin? Hallelujah. Let's look at Hebrews chapter 2, verses 14 to 16. Again, to confirm the point that we have just made. That he lived a sinless life, did mighty works that nobody else has ever done, died for humankind, for our sins, rose from the dead, ascended to heaven, and is sitting right now at the right hand of God, the right hand of power. And he has all power, authority, dominion, preeminence over all creations of God in heaven, on earth, and beneath the earth. And the scripture supports that Hebrews 2 14 and 16. Hebrews 2 14 and 16. Read it with me. Inasmuch then as the children have partaken of flesh and blood, he himself likewise shared in the same that through death he might destroy him who had the power of death, that is the devil. So he destroyed the devil, he defeated him. Glory be to God. Verse 15. And release those who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. Last scripture to just emphasize this point number two that we have made. That is Jesus and a more excellent name and name above all names through his achievements. By reading John chapter 15 verse 24. John chapter 15. Verse 24, look at it with me. Here Jesus Christ spoke by himself and said he did the work that no one else has ever done. John chapter 15, verse 24. He said, if I had not done among them the works which no one else did. This is Jesus speaking. If I had not done among them the works which no one else did, they would have no sin. But now they have sinned and also hated both me and my father. I want to take that again. Jesus Christ is the one speaking here about his achievements. He said, if I had not done among them the works which no one else did, they would have no sin. But now they have seen and also hated both me and my father. They have seen greater works than what anybody else has ever done. Yet, they have hated me and my father. Jesus Christ, and a more excellent name, the name above all names, as we have seen in, that, in these scriptures and also by our texts, by his achievements. Point number three, 
by conferment, by conferment, God conferred on him the name above all names. Hallelujah. God Almighty conferred upon Jesus Christ the name above all names. So, all creatures in heaven and on earth and beneath the earth are under his name. Number four, we said by creation, by creation, through him, Jesus Christ, God made the world. Through him, Jesus Christ, God made the world. So the world, all creatures, respond to him. They hear his name. They know his name. They obey his name. They recognize his name. Darkness hears his name. Light hears his name. Living things hears his name. Not living things, everything hears the name of Jesus Christ. For by him, all things were created that are in heaven and that are on the earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominion, or principalities or powers, all things were created through him and for him. This is Colossians chapter 1. If we read from verse 14 to 16, glory be to God. So, as the pot is subject to the potter, so are all creatures subject. To Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the name above all names. Let us read that uh, Hebrews chapter 1 again from verse 1 to 6 and remind ourselves. He said, God, who at various times and in various ways spoke in time past to the fathers by the prophets, has in this last day spoken to us by his son, whom he has appointed heir of all things. Appointed heir of all things by appointment, by confirmment, through whom also he made the worlds. Through him, God made all things. Three, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself pushed our sins, sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become so much better than the angels, as he has by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. For to which of the angels did he ever say, you are my son, today I have begotten you. And again, I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. Six, but when he again brings the firstborn into the world, he says, let all the angels of God worship him. The Lord, brothers and sisters, these scriptures again confirm the four points that we have made. That Jesus Christ is the name above all names. Is the highest name. He occupies the highest place, the highest position in the entire universe, in heaven on earth, beneath the earth, by inheritance, by achievement, by conferment, and by creation. So now that we know all this, what then is the difference? Why did Peter call the name of Jesus and the lame man? Left and walked, according to Acts chapter 3, verses 6 and 8. Why did Paul call the name of Jesus, this name, and a girl that was possessed of the spirit of divination was instantly delivered from that spirit of divination, according to Acts chapter 16. Verse 18, you can read it all the way from 16 to 18. Why did Philip, Stephen, and the rest 
of the early believers and the apostles call on this name, the name of Jesus. And great things, miracles, signs and wonders happen. But on the contrary, why did the seven sons of Sceva call the name of Jesus, but were beaten and scattered, according to Acts chapter 19, verse 11 to 17. Let's just look at that and then take the discussion from there. Acts chapter 19, let's look at it again and start all the way from verse 11 to 17. Now God worked unusual miracles by the hands of Paul, so that even handkerchiefs of all aprons were brought from his body to the sick, and the diseases left them, and the evil spirits went out of them. Then some of the itinerant Jewish exorcists took it upon themselves to call the name of the Lord Jesus over those who had evil spirits, saying, we exorcise you by the Jesus whom Paul preaches. Verse 14. Also, there were seven sons of Sceva, a Jewish chief priest, who did so. 15. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are you? Then the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them, overpowered them, and prevailed against them, so that they fled out of that house naked, wounded. This became, verse 17, the last verse we read, this became known both to all Jews and Greeks dwelling in Ephesus, and fear fell on them all, and the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified, and the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified. Let me just add verse 18. And many who had believed came confessing and telling their deeds the name of Jesus. Beloved, absolutely no doubt what God has packaged in the name of Jesus for us. But we can see that some call on this name, and they don't get the answers, they don't get the result. What is the difference? Peter called, answers came, power flowed, blessings flowed, Paul called, power flowed, Stephen, Philip, the other believers, are all through the book of Acts. But the seven sons of Sceva, who is a representation or who are a representation of many today, who think they can just take the name of the Lord and call at all times. Deceivers, the Bible calls them, they call. Nothing happened. Self-deceivers. Let's look at some scriptures and learn. Pay attention and see the difference. To start with, you may think that Peter just started learning or just started to learn about the name of Jesus Christ in Acts. But well, let's see what Jesus taught them. In Mark, Mark chapter three, let's look at verses 13 to 16. In Mark chapter three, if we start reading from verse 13, Beautiful lesson there from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The Bible says, and he went up on the mountain and called to him those he himself wanted. And they came to him. There is a calling. The Bible says, when you hear his voice, harden not your heart. There are many people who are hearing my voice right now. And the spirit of God is telling you, you, come to this Jesus. And yet you are holding tight to your religion. You are holding tight to your lifestyle. You're holding tight to your activities, your plans. It is by the calling. When you hear your, his voice, harden not your heart. So he called to himself those he wanted, and they came to him. Verse 14, look at it with me. 
Then he appointed 12 that they might be with him and that he might send them out to preach. 15, and to have power to heal sicknesses and to cast out demons. Simon, to whom he gave the name Peter, James, the son of Zebedee, John, the brother of James, to whom he gave the name Juan Egis, that is the sons of thunder. And the Bible continues. So Jesus called. He is calling you. He calls people to himself that they, would, that they may do what? That they may be with him and that he might send them to where he himself would want to go. And when he sends them, he empowers them to have power, to heal the sick, to cast out demons, to preach the kingdom of God and bring many souls into the kingdom of God. Glory be to God. Look with me again. Luke chapter 10. We'll read verses 1 and 2, and then we'll read 9, 17, and we'll go like that. Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10. So those were the 12, Luke chapter 10. It says, after these things, the Lord appointed 70 others also and sent them two by two before he says into every city and place where he himself was about to go. The same. Now, 70 others, not the 12, 70 others. In fact, you know, there was even another set whom the disciples saw. They were casting out or someone, a man, was casting out demons in the name of Jesus. While Jesus was still on earth and the disciples said to Jesus, look, we saw somebody casting out demons in your name and we forbid them. Jesus said, don't forbid. <laughs> don't forbid him for if he is... If he is with us, he cannot be against us. Glory be to God. So 70 others. Let's jump to verse 9. And so in verse 9, he said, And heal the sick there, and say to them, The kingdom of God has come near to you. Let's jump to verse 17. These 70 went out, and then they reported back. Here they are reporting verse 17. He said, then the 70 returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. Demons are subject to us in whose name? The name of Jesus. This name that the demon, the devil said to the seven sons of Sceva, Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. But who are you? Verse 18, we continue to read. Luke chapter 10, verse 18. And he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Jesus is the one speaking. Verse 19, behold, I give you authority. King James Version said power. So both power, authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. So authority which is the right translation and the right use here, because Jesus himself is the one who has the power. The one God has put everything in him and in his name, and he has given us the authority to use his name. Unqualified authority. He has given us a blank check in his name for us to fill in as we like. He has given us the power of attorney in his name to do the will of God. I want to read that verse 19 again and then continue. He said, Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Nothing shall by any means hurt you. 20. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this that the spirits are subject to you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. 
There is an identity, brothers and sisters. He said, rejoice that your names are written in heaven. You see, because it is possible for others to use higher demons to cast out lower demons. They can play their tricks. But that does not qualify them to be identified in the kingdom of heaven, in the kingdom of God. So there is an identity thing here. He said, rejoice that your name are written in heaven. 21, in that hour, Jesus rejoiced in the spirit and said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and prudent and revealed them to babes, even so, Father, for so it seemed good in your sight. It is, this thing is hidden from many, but revealed to babes. He said, all things have been delivered to me by my father. And no one knows who the son is except the father. And who the father is except the son. And the one to whom the son wills to reveal him. Brothers and sisters, you should read this kind of scriptures seven times a day, seven days of the week, and all through the month and all through the year, and get pumped up to know the privilege that you and I have in Christ Jesus and in his name. Jesus rejoiced and told and thanked God when the 70s returned and testified, he said, thank you, Father, that these things have been hidden from the wise of this world that have been revealed to those whom he called babes. Here, verse 23, he said, then he turned to his disciples and said privately, blessed are the eyes which see the things you see. For I tell you that many prophets and kings have desired to see what you see and have not seen it and to hear what you hear and have not heard it. Brothers and sisters, we have come to a dispensation. We are the greatest power in heaven on earth beneath the earth have been revealed. And that power is in the name of Jesus. All that Abraham has experienced, Isaac, Jacob, Moses has experienced, all that David, Elijah, put them all together, have experienced, are nothing. They desire to hear and to see what God has given to us in this dispensation, the power in the name of Jesus. And they did not. Here we are. So, from the scripture we have read, you can see that it is all about him, Jesus. It is not about you. It is not about me. It is not by your might. It is not by your power. It is all about Jesus. It is about his work to glorify the Father and establish the kingdom, the kingdom of God. You must be determined, my brothers and sisters, to live to glorify God and to abide with him, Jesus, to abide with him from all that we have heard from those scriptures. So now we can see why the evil spirit with eye of the spirit said to the seven sons of Sceva, I don't know you. By that name, I don't know you by that name you are calling. That is the only name I'm subject to. So you don't have the right. You don't have the identity. You don't have the authority to use that name. So because they had no identity of those authorized to use the name, the name didn't work. Though there is so much power, unlimited power, Though everything in heaven and on earth and beneath the earth are subject to that name, yet it didn't profit them anything. What is the difference, brothers and sisters? 
for this name to walk in your life, for there to be a difference by the name. Number one, one, you, I, we must accept Jesus Christ. You must accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and abide in him and with him. Number one, you must accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and abide in him and with him. It's very important to abide in him and with him. There are people who have accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, but yet there is no fellowship. Yet there is no commitment. They don't abide in Christ and they don't abide with him. So as you've seen in Acts chapter three there from verse 13 and 14, Jesus called those whom he wanted that they may be with him. The same in the book of Luke chapter 10 that you saw. When we read from verse 11, that they should be with him. No wonder the book of John chapter 15, Jesus in verse five, Jesus said that if he is the true vine and any branch that abides in him and he in the branch, Bears much fruit. Glory be to God. So, number one, for this name to have the power, you must abide. You must accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and abide in Him and with Him. Number two, you must receive His branding for identity, his branding for identity. The Holy Spirit is the one through whom God brands us for himself. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13. There are many scriptures. We'll just look at Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13. Open your Bible with me. Ephesians 1, 13. If you're there, let's read together. Say, in him, you also trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Verse 14, let's continue. Who is the guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased, of the purchased possession to the praise of his glory? Oh, glory be to God. Glory be to Jesus. Paul, in the book of Galatians, chapter 6, verse 17, says, I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus. The marks branded for Christ. We are branded by the Spirit of God. Number three, you must have the knowledge of the truth. You must have the knowledge of the truth. That is the word of God. There are many who have accepted Jesus. They have fellowship. They abide with him. They have received the Holy Spirit. But they resist to grow in knowledge. The knowledge of the truth. So they can handle this Mighty blessing, mighty power, mighty salvation. Glorious promise. Divine promise. And eternal life that God has given to us through the name of Jesus. So, the truth sets us free. The word of God is power, knowledge of the truth. And when knowledge is lacking, the people perish. As we've also seen in the book of Galatians chapter four, that even a hair, the Bible says one that is the hair, if it is a child, 
a child that doesn't know his right, a child that cannot exercise authority, he, be, he behaves. He's not different from a slave. He is like a slave. Number four, you must listen to the Holy Spirit. It is the Spirit of God that leads, that teaches, that prompts our actions. It is the Spirit of God. When you now read the book of Acts, you will always see the disciples, the Bible says, and him filled of the Holy Spirit did this. Him full of the Holy Spirit said, the Holy Spirit. So you must learn to listen to the Holy Spirit and walk with him. Number five, this is very critical. You must exercise the authority in the name of Jesus Christ. Exercise your authority in the name of Jesus Christ. Number six, pray and ask the Father. Whatever, whatever you desire in the name of Jesus Christ. Beloved brothers and sisters, let's just look at a few scriptures to confirm this. Do note that the word faith is a subset of these points that I have made and doesn't stand on its own. It is an integral part of all the points that I have made. So faith is a subset. For example, of number three, have the knowledge of the truth. Number five, exercise your authority in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's look at John chapter 16. John chapter 16, verses 23 and 24. In that day, you will ask me nothing. In that day, you will ask me nothing. This was Jesus Christ speaking to his disciples. I say to you, whatever you ask the Father in my name, you ask the Father in my name, he will give you. 24. Until now, you have asked nothing in my name. Ask, and you will receive that your joy may be full. The same John chapter 15, John chapter 15, verse 16. Jesus again said, you did not choose me, but I choose you and appointed you that you should go and be a fruit and that your fruit should remain. That whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. Of course, you already know what John chapter 14 verses 12 through 16 says. He says, most assuredly I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also, and greater works than this he will do, because I go to my Father, 13, and whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. In Matthew chapter 18, which I often refer to it with us, Matthew 18. Let's go back now. You understand that scripture better. Matthew chapter 18, verses 19 and 20. Jesus spoke he said, again, I say to you, that if two of you agree on earth concerning anything that they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, I am there in the midst of them. Brothers and sisters, now hear me. The name of Jesus Christ is what I would call divine spiritual automation. Automation. So it is like coding. When you have coded a program, once you click the button, Everything that has been coded for the program to do happens automatically. Hallelujah. And so when you are in the name, that is, you have accepted Jesus, you abide with him and he abides in you. You have received the branding of the spirit of God. And you are operating by the knowledge of the truth, which is the word of God, according to the word of God. 
You have the Holy Spirit. You listen to the Holy Spirit leading. Exercise authority in the name of Jesus. And pray to the Father in that mighty name. You will experience what Paul experienced. You will experience what Peter experienced. And all glory will be to God and to Jesus Christ our Lord. And the kingdom of God will continue to enlarge and manifest in your life and in my life. All to the glory of God. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Just want to close with a testimony and probably read some uh, notes that I picked from a man of God that I have referred to uh, a number of times. That is, uh, one is uh, Smith Wigglesworth. Smith Wigglesworth. Smith Wigglesworth testified about believers, believers who went to pray for a man. I just read it through. Hear this. It says, speaking the name of Jesus, speaking the name of Jesus in his book. The book by Smith Wigglesworth on healing. Smith, Smith Wigglesworth on healing, page 13. I'll read it very quickly. He said, I want to instill in you the power, the virtue, and the glory of that name. The power, the virtue, and the glory of that name. So six people went into the house of a sick man to pray for him. He was a leader of the Episcopal Church, and he lay in his bed utterly helpless. He had read a little track about healing and had heard about people praying for the sick. So knowledge, but not full knowledge. So he sent for these friends who he thought could pray the prayer of faith, the prayer of faith. According to James chapter 5, verse 15, he was anointed according to James 5, 14. But because he had no immediate manifestation of healing, he wept bitterly. The six people walked out of the room, somewhat crestfallen, to see the man lying there in an unchanged condition. When they were outside, one of the six said, there is one thing we could have done. That one got the prompting of the Holy Spirit. Hear him. He said, I wish we would all go back with me and try it. They all went back and got together in a group. This brother said, let us whisper the name of Jesus. Whisper, hallelujah. At first, when they whispered this worthy name, nothing seemed to happen. But as they continued to whisper, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. The power began to fall as they saw that God was beginning to walk, as they saw that the divine automation has manifested, the effect and joy increased. That's why I told you, brothers and sisters, that I call this name that God has given us divine spiritual automation. If you know how to press the button in the name of Jesus, Power will always flow. Power will always fall. A manifestation is guaranteed in the mighty name of Jesus and to the glory of God. As they saw that God was beginning to walk, a faith and joy increased, and they whispered their name louder and louder. As I am screaming that name now, somebody scream that name with me. Jesus! 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 Whatever you get with, whatever your trouble is, whatever your problem is, Jesus, 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 fill that name with me. The sun is returning to you. The miracle is happening. The healing is happening. The child is getting healed. Fill that name with me. The deliverance is taking place right now. Fill that name with me. Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, as they did so, the man rose from his bed and dressed himself. The secret was this. Those six people had gotten their eyes off the sick man 
and were taken up with the Lord Jesus himself. Their faith grasped the power in his name. Their faith grasped the power in his name. And hear his exhortation. Oh, if people would only appreciate the power in this name, there is no telling of what would happen. Glory be to God. E.W. Kenyon also said that if we will grasp what God has provided in this name, nothing will be impossible to us. Glory be to God. On power, majesty be to our God in the name of Jesus Christ. If you're still struggling with sin, you have not accepted Jesus. Just pray with me to Heavenly Father. I accept Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, as my Lord and Savior. I confess with my mouth that Jesus died for me and God raised him from the dead. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he is my Lord. From now on, Jesus Christ, be the Lord over my life. And Heavenly Father, forgive me all my sins. All my iniquities, my errors, my mistakes, forgive me all and make me indeed your son, a son of God. Pray with me and say, Heavenly Father, give me your Holy Spirit. Fill me now with your Holy Spirit and transform my life into the glorious image of the Son of God. And from today, help me to do your will in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless you, brothers and sisters, and thank you for connecting, and go and put the word into practice, and let the testimonies abound unto the glory of God, in Jesus' mighty name, amen.